This is AI Talks, your monthly 55 minutes of fresh updates and tools of our trade in data and machine learning. I'm Daniel, your tonight's host. And first, I must say that here at Saucer, we indeed treat our work like bastard jewelers do, from picking those solid rocks containing gold or other mineral deposits at our clients' cases, carving our data gems using our instruments from the toolbox, and then polishing those into finest jewels of our final developed solutions. Well, following this shiny analogy, it often happens that the business wants to see those gems right here, right now. They need to sense their real world value, see the quality of the prospect. They want to look into the deep of this rock right, right above our shoulder. And such simplest user interface for our stakeholders to quickly check the value or validate the scientific digging approach is what makes the rapid prototype stand out from other data science activities. Today, I'm welcoming Dr. Andrei Rishkov, our star expert at SoftServe. Uh, Andrei will demonstrate a powerful tool um, that allows data specialists to construct full-fledged web applications with virtually no hard time in front-end work. This is a story how our data science group accelerates their prototyping with handy project templates and what it takes to build a professional looking dashboard for your data digging project. Thank you. Hi, Andre. How are you? Please share what you prepare for us. Um, thank you, Daniel. And thank you. Hello, everybody. Let me start sharing my screen. Um, yeah, exactly as Daniel just uh, introduced, I'm going to talk today about um, how we do rapid prototyping in, in, in data science group, what tools do we use, and how we can accelerate even this <laughs> rapid process of uh, prototyping and bring our best practices uh, on the table. So uh, uh, today uh, I will uh, uh, cover a couple of questions, but, but before we begin, um, I encourage you to prepare your phones, maybe uh, just open another uh, uh, tap in your browser on mantic.com uh, and we'll have uh, one small question for you to interact uh, on the next slide. So talking about uh, what I will cover today, I, I will start uh, with the introduction uh, on our rapid AI proto prototyping process, what it is for and what step in it includes. Uh, I will uh, continue with uh, web pro uh, prototyping tools overview, uh, what are available and how to select the best one. Um, following with the introduction and starting guide how to use Plotly Dash um, and our Dash cookie cutter template, which accelerates uh, the project uh, creation and definitely a couple examples with some useful tips. And um, and this is um, a, a small pool, uh, very small, only one question. I encourage you to participate and share your experience uh, which you have in uh, that uh, prototyping tools. Okay, let's jump into rapid uh, prototyping uh, journey. And uh, when we work with our clients, uh, we usually start our engagement with some uh, pre-sales activities or rapid assessment workshop. We're trying to ideate with, to, together with clients and um, build some roadmap of use cases that are feasible to implement. But the next uh, logical step is actually uh, do prototype, do, do prototyping. And this prototyping of AI solutions uh, should be rapid. We need to, uh, um, in a rapid way, quite fast, uh, uh, validate that uh, solution uh, is feasible, that solution uh, is works pretty fine on the data clients has, and that actually the solution meets the requirements of, of the business. And we need to uh, provide some way for business, for non-technical people to evaluate our uh, solution yeah basically to to use it and uh, uh, to do to do that uh, we use our web pro pro web prototyping tools and um, in in many cases um, uh, there are def definitely different scenarios yeah different strategies how we can uh, do that uh, prototypes and 
Uh, in data science group in SoftServe, we are strong believers that uh, prototypes should combine uh, the core functionality of a machine learning solution powered by the data um, uh, within the client, and it should provide some uh, reasonable UI for the business users to validate, to evaluate the solution, to try to use it, to understand that it actually works and it brings some value. And for that case, uh, we need some web uh, simple web prototype uh, tools because by the end of the day we're not front end engineers and we don't need to have all the skills of uh, front end engineers. But still, uh, we are as a data scientist uh, pretty uh, capable of delivering these uh, simple but yet powerful uh, prototypes to our clients. What web UI uh, for our uh, AI cases? Uh, should be uh, capable of doing. So this is these four pillars. The first one, uh, analyze, analyze data. Yeah. So this solution uh, should be able in real time to do some simple analysis, like probably do some clusterization or uh, do inference part, basically predict something, for example, like uh, price of the house Yeah. from the, uh, housing, uh, pretty popular housing task. The next, um, the next pillar is visualization. The solution should be able to visualize. Basically, we need uh, uh, cool graphics uh, and um, insightful graphics uh, on our dashboards and uh, in our applications. The third pillar is interact, uh, meaning that it shouldn't be just static uh, information on your browser. Uh, the user should interact uh, with this application. Uh, the, user, uh, the user should be able to provide the inputs and get the results uh, from this uh, application. And the last one uh, pillar is serve. Basically, it should be uh, operationalized in some uh, cloud infrastructure, for example, or on-prem. Uh, depending on the requirements uh, of the of the customer, um, what tools? Yeah, what tools do we have uh, to uh, to make this happen? Yeah, um, I um, listed a couple uh, available open source tools um, on the market: Dash, Streamlit, R Shiny, Jupyter, Voila, Flask. And there are, I believe, a couple other uh, exist, but uh, um, I will not mention it, mention them today just for the simplicity of this analysis. Um, I tried to put a simple uh, compares, uh, comparison to analyze what the pros and cons of each, uh, of each uh, library, of each framework, and where they fit, basically, yeah? I put um, uh, the, the dimension of maturity. Uh, this is uh, basically how long for how long it is uh, uh, present uh, on the market. Um, the popularity uh, means uh, how popular and it's measured by number of stars on GitHub, simplicity of use, um, basically, um, how simple, yeah, how simple uh, it is to learn this tool and uh, basically what time you need to start developing uh, something uh, more or less uh, feasible uh, using this framework. Uh, the next one is adaptability, yeah, because some, some tools mm, uh, are nice, but uh, they don't provide too much uh, capabilities to adapt in terms of styles, in terms of uh, components. Um, uh, and uh, on the contrary, some other tools may provide just basically any customization, but in the cost of the uh, 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 cost of the development uh, uh, using this tool. Um, some information uh, which focus each of tool has and the programming language uh, it supports. And um, uh, having this uh, comparison, we see that 
pretty popular tools, Dash, Streamlit, uh, Jupyter, uh, Flask as well, but Flask is a, a um, general purpose web fr framework and we're not counting them as a rapid prototype. It's a regular web development tool that it does not fit our requirements for this particular case. But Dash uh, and Streamlit, good tools. Um, uh, basically we see that uh, Streamlit is much more simpler than Dash, but the same way uh, Dash provides more uh, flexibility, more adaptability yeah, uh, to the client need. So the question, which one to use? Uh, imagine you have a requirement to uh, build a prototype to the client, which uh, should look like a good production level uh, and production looking uh, application, which tool uh, uh, would you use? And as always, um, there is no simple answer. Uh, each tool fits uh, its own purpose. And um, for example, as we see Dash uh, fits best uh, when we need uh, professionally looking production ready uh, dashboard applications uh, for our cli clients. Streamleads works perfectly when we need a pretty simple, but yet a mm, uh, pr pretty simple prototype, but uh, yet to develop, as, uh, uh, develop it really fast. Uh, Shiny is a best, uh, uh, best case uh, when uh, your language uh, of the solution is R. Jupyter Notebook is a great uh, uh, way, but it's not, honestly speaking, uh, a dashboard application, it's a notebook. Uh, but still can provide some results in Jupyter. Voila uh, works in, Ju in Jupyter environment. It's uh, pretty good, but not that mature as, as the rest. And Flask uh, will power you if you need the full power of, of web development, but you will probably need to be a, a front-end front uh, engineer for that. Uh, and um, we, by the way, uh, already uh, had one session of our talks uh, quite recent uh, covering stream Streamlit. And you can check it uh, for the reference. Very great introduction and uh, guide over uh, Streamlit uh, features. But today we'll focus on Dash. We'll focus on Plotly Dash. Uh, great framework. framework. As um, I've mentioned uh, previously, it provides great capabilities of, and great adaptability towards different cases. Uh, you can see uh, the Plotly Dash uh, has a great uh, documentation uh, uh, which makes it very easy to learn and uh, to start developing on uh, using Dash framework. Basically, what you need to start developing your dashboards or your uh, application using um, using Plotly Dash. The first step: create a project folder, uh, set up a virtual environment, and install Dash. The next one. Uh, we can, you should create a simple uh, file app by and add the basic skeleton of your application, which will include some imports, definitely including Dash itself, definition of the um, uh, application object called app. Um, then you'll need to provide layout uh, um, of the visual components, which will be available on your application page. And the last thing you need to do here, just launch, uh, provide the con for uh, running and launching uh, your uh, dashboard application. The next step, launch this uh, file with Python interpreter, and it will get your application running in the, in the browser. Very simple. Uh, for the First steps for a, for a simple application, it's very simple to start. The learning curve is pretty uh, simple, I would say. Um, you're ready to uh, develop your first application. Remember the requirements for the web, pro for web prototyping tools. You need some interactivity level, inter level of interaction. And it's enabled by the uh, so-called callbacks functions. Uh, they're connected to the components, visual components uh, on your page. And um, in the case that uh, the component property 
uh, which are you, you are tracking is changing, the callback will, will fire up, it will run the, the function and the web page will be updated with uh, new values. Uh, for example, this uh, simple example, uh, we'll uh, type uh, some values in the in input form. And as you can see, it's instantly reflected in the output uh, in this simple example. Um, let's talk in detail uh, uh, the main concepts of the dash. And I believe there's two main concepts that you need to aware in order to develop with dash. Um, a plot dash. The first one is a component. It's a visual component. Uh, they are um, React components powered by React uh, framework, but you need, don't need to be expert in React or G, uh, JavaScript or anything front end. You just need to use pure Python uh, objects in order to create your um, layout on the page, visual components of the page. And the second uh, important concept is the callback, which enables interaction which we just dis uh, discussed uh, on the application. And it's basically uh, functions uh, which are called uh, whenever some input uh, of the component uh, uh, is changed. Um, talking about the component uh, in details, as I said, uh, it's a pure, uh, pure, pure Python class. Um, the visual components uh, um, on the page, uh, they create this uh, tree structure, they create a, a hierarchy, uh, and it is uh, provided by the um, property of the components called children. So those uh, components that should be extended or that uh, capable of having nested components, they always have these property children and the children itself could be a list. So we can, as, uh, as you see example on the screen from uh, div uh, component, they can have some children and it creates a, a tree representation of your layout of visual components on the page. The root component, uh, the root visual component of the page should be assigned to the property layout of the app object. This is the entry point basically of your layout. Um, there is an optional possibility to, uh, to uh, define ID of the properties. Um, and these IDs uh, will be used to uh, uh, refer to these uh, components in your callbacks. Uh, and uh, uh, Dash provides a variety of uh, reusable components for rapid prototyping. And um, these components uh, also provided by uh, built-in uh, libraries uh, within uh, Dash or some external ones. The most um, useful, in my opinion, is uh, Dash HTML components. They, they basically provide uh, components for uh, HTML tags, but purely in Python. Uh, Dash core, uh, core uh, components, uh, they provide components like a little bit more so sophisticated um, uh, components like uh, input fields, like uh, date picker or dro drop down or table. Uh, this is core components from uh, Plotly Dash. Uh, Dash uh, data table, a great uh, component one component that uh, provides advanced capabilities for uh, tables on your application. And great example of external uh, dashboard, uh, uh, external components, uh, dash bootstrap company. They are leveraging uh, bootstrap framework, front-end framework boots called bootstrap uh, to provide um, uh, uh, ways uh, for easy uh, uh, creation of uh, layouts uh, using uh, Bootstrap uh, um, Bootstrap tools, and uh, some other um, components you can check on uh, Plotly Dash uh, website. Um, callbacks, uh, how do they work? So basically, callback is a function uh, that. Um, uh, decorate, it has uh, additional decorator uh, up callback uh, where you define inputs and outputs of this callback. 
for each input and for each output, you should define the component ID and the name of the property uh, in this ID. For the inputs, uh, the property which we are tracking and the output that uh, the component uh, where our outputs will be uh, assigned. The function itself takes uh, input uh, values of the uh, input component in this property uh, as an input and the output goes to the uh, output component as a result of this function. Um, and this is uh, pretty much for basics. Yeah, uh, when even with this knowledge, you can uh, you can start developing very simple uh, dash uh, applications, uh, and they will be pretty useful. They will provide ways of visualization, ways of inter interactions, uh, and well, we are already doing great. But if we want to do even more. Uh, we want to provide uh, um, professional looking applications that will look not like uh, out of the box, yeah, something good looking uh, styles applied to your application. If you want to have multi page uh, application within the same application, yeah, uh, uh, that is not covered in this uh, basic uh, approach with, the, uh, with Dash. And if you want to start your project with a, um, uh, with a project structure uh, defined by be best practices, you want to do some step more. And this step is our uh, dash cookie cutter template, uh, which uh, accelerates building um, advanced and good looking dash application uh, for the uh, AI ML projects. Uh, it's our internal uh, development of the data science group. You can see the links uh, to the Confluence page with the description. You can see the link to the uh, Git repository with this uh, cookie cutter template. And it provides uh, the way to jumpstart your project uh, that will include, um, that in, uh, will include uh, the project structure according to all the best practices um, it will um, provide uh, support for multi-page application uh, and it will be uh, based on um, uh, Dash Bootstrap components. Basically, it leverages Bootstrap uh, framework, which provides nice ways to customize your styles of your application and develop your application um, very easily and with less efforts. Um, what do you need to, uh, uh, to use this uh, template? You need a cookie cutter. You, if you haven't heard about cookie cutter before, it's a nice common line tool uh, written in Python and it provides capabilities of um, defining and using cookie, defining project templates and using cookie cutter to uh, create this project. Uh, it leverages a simple command line wizard uh, to create this um, uh, project, you answer a couple of questions like what is what will be the uh, project name, uh, what will be the license, for example, what is your uh, name, what is your email, and that's it. Cookie Cutter creates uh, a project structure, and it includes uh, your responses within this uh, structure uh, in the code. Mm. Four simple steps, four simple steps, how we can uh, create and build our application using uh, our dash cookie, uh, cookie starter template. The first one, um, uh, create the skeleton of your dash application. Yeah, just run cookie cutter uh, with the name of the repository of uh, our template, then CD into your uh, project uh, folder. The second step, um, uh, you need to create a virtual environment. You need to install requirements. Um, luckily, uh, um, our project templates supports make command. So you may uh, use simple commands like make the end, make requirements, which will create virtual requirement uh, and, install, uh, uh, and install requirements. Uh, uh, that I needed um, to run this application. The third step, basically you need to 
uh, develop your own application. Yeah, you will have the, the starting uh, layout and the starting uh, application that is running by default, but you can modify it under your needs uh, and provide uh, your, um, your code to, to your application. And just run it, make dev that will launch this application in the uh, development uh, mode. Uh, regarding the structure of the uh, skeleton of the project, yeah, uh, you can see that uh, it reflects uh, the recommended structure for the uh, uh, machine learning or data science project, general recommendations, plus it includes um, uh, uh, under the uh, folders SRC uh, pages, it includes uh, the files that you would like to modify uh, to uh, make this application your own basically yeah provide your own layout your uh, your solution your um, <clears throat> your application this is how a uh, default uh, application um, generated by the uh, templates look, look like it, it consists of two pages uh, the home page uh, is kind of landing page um, when it describes uh, why people would like uh, to use this uh, application and what it's for. And the second page is actually um, a small demo page. And in this case, uh, it's a demo of uh, a stock market prices visualization. We'll uh, um, uh, talk about this example in a couple of minutes. Uh, template is great, but you don't need exactly only the template. You need your actual uh, application. So you need to customize it. Yeah, you need to configure it under your needs. So uh, there are two uh, configuration items that you should consider. The first one is uh, layout and callbacks of indi individual pages of applications. As a starter, as I mentioned, we have two pages, uh, uh, home page and uh, one page, with, which ba basically uh, bring some uh, analytics. Um, you should look into the folder pages where you can configure um, the menu, configure the um, routes uh, of your application. Then you need to uh, actually define um, the layout and callbacks for your uh, pages of your uh, application. And we already provided a page not found uh, uh, page to handle all uh, not found errors within your application. And the second part, uh, which needs uh, configuration, uh, it's uh, stored in, into the config file where you can um, change uh, stuff like uh, title of the application, uh, logo of the application, uh, routes uh, that will be sold by the web uh, applications and navigation menu that built in, into the top of the, of the application. Let's cover them uh, step by step. So um, um, the first uh, configuration items in terms of uh, title, uh, routes and navigation menus, they are all in config.py. Uh, uh, you can. It's a simple, uh, mm, a simple file, and it, it con contains uh, commands that explain what you should um, uh, adjust in, uh, in your application. But basically, mm, uh, URLs uh, uh, define the list of routes, which will be served by your uh, web application. Basically, how get uh, requests to your web browser uh, to your web server, your application will be transformed into the uh, pages which user uh, will see. The nav uh, items uh, on the other side, it's a list of uh, menu items that will be visible uh, on the uh, on your uh, web page. Um, and uh, you can check these uh, items, uh, uh, configuration items, uh, um, in the browser window, yeah, in our sample application. Uh, the root, if you see uh, currently it's page one, it's root, it uh, reflected in, into loading uh, this um, page one. Uh, in our example application, uh, title of the application we have in the top uh, left corner. On the top 
right, we have place for uh, navigation menu items. And uh, uh, on the right, we have a place for logo uh, of our application. And on the white, uh, um, white side uh, of these uh, sample application, we have actually the content of the and the layout uh, of the page one um, dot file. Our uh, page, basically, a uh, page of uh, our application. Um, another important point, uh, how, uh, how efficiently uh, develop a Dash application. I strongly recommend uh, using uh, Dash Bootstrap components. Yeah, they leverage Bootstrap op uh, open source front end uh, framework, but you don't need to understand it like as a front end engineer but still we need to understand at least some concepts how Bootstrap uh, lay, uh, places elements uh, on the page. And um, basically uh, there's a concept of grid in the Bootstrap and there are three simple terms which you need to understand. The first one is a container. Uh, it places all the content, um, um, all the content of the page uh, and leave some margins uh, on the right and left side uh, of the browser. And when you change the site, uh, uh, change the size of the window of the browser, the content in, in the middle stays pretty much the same level. So basically container, it's <clears throat> one top level um, uh, component on your page. Then rows, yeah, that's a rows uh, that uh, will lie within the container and they represent horizontal uh, uh, pieces on your page. And we have correspondent uh, components from uh, Dash Bootstrap components. And the last one is columns, which basically are columns. Uh, we need to uh, remember that in Dash Bootstrap, by default, there are 12 columns and each uh, 12, let's say, places yeah, for the columns. And each physical column, each, uh, physical component uh, on the page uh, could um, cover one column or couple columns. And this is uh, defined by the component width. Uh, um, uh, uh, parameter widths of the um, call component from the dash bootstrap. Um, how we can style our application even more? Basically, um, uh, out of the box, uh, dash cookie cutter template provides uh, the styling according to the Soft serve uh, brand guide um, as much as possible. Let's say it's based on uh, Bootstrap uh, framework, and uh, we have our customly developed uh, uh, CSS style sheet uh, to cover that styling, and it's already uh, enabled uh, in this uh, uh, cookie cutter template. If you want to change the style and the, the visual theme of your application, there are a couple options. You can provide your own uh, CSS files in the uh, assets folder and Dash will automatically locate them and use these files. Or you can connect uh, external style sheets um, as a property of Dash objects. Uh, as you can see, this example um, of code uh, provides uh, a styling according to the default bootstrap th uh, theme. And um, Dash Bootstrap component supports uh, these uh, additional stylings that came from uh, Bootswatch project. They were all incorporated in the uh, Dash Bootstrap components available for the Dash. And um, you can easily select uh, this styling without any additional de development efforts. 
and use it in your own uh, application. Uh, if you wanna use our software style, um, you don't need to do any other actions. It's provided by default in uh, Dash uh, Cookie Cutter template. Um, you need to uh, uh, remember that uh, these um, uh, this uh, uh, style in the theme uh, basically uh, covers all the elements of Dash Bootstrap component library. And additionally, it covers uh, three components from Dash core components, which uh, pretty often we combine together with components from uh, Bootstrap. Here you can see on the slide how they will look like in your application. And uh, the last piece of uh, my talk today is a couple, uh, couple examples. I would like to start from the first example. It's a stock uh, price visualization uh, that comes uh, together with Dash Cookie Cutter template by default. You will have this uh, application when you create uh, um, create your project using uh, this template from the scratch. Basically, what we have here, yeah, just let's analyze. Uh, in the first column, you see the regular definition of the dash uh, page, some imports, and then we have uh, some auxiliary functions that we use uh, in this specific uh, application. It loads uh, some stock prices from the Yahoo Finance site. In the middle column, we have the definition of layout. You see the layout uh, variable uh, at the top, and then uh, we have uh, our visual components defined, yeah? You can check uh, uh, the code of these components in details in your um, in your uh, IDE, but here we will, uh, we will uh, check a couple interesting details uh, in a minute. And the last column basically callbacks. Yep, um, what uh, will happen when we press the button and process uh, in our uh, interface? And let's have a look. This is how our um, uh, sample demo application looked like. Uh, again, let me remind you that this is a uh, stock price uh, visualization application and it's uh, pretty interactive. Uh, you can select the uh, stock uh, ticker. Then you can adjust uh, the start and end date, uh, which will be visualized. Then we press the button process. It's processing. You see the running state and I have the output have the small table uh, with information about this uh, company that's Amazon. And we have a plot with a, um, um, with a uh, historical prices from the 2011 till the uh, uh, 2021. Very simple, very simple, but yet it demonstrates uh, all the capabilities, how you will uh, place all the elements uh, in your uh, page layout and how you will call the callbacks and make the results. A uh, couple tips, yeah, what's interesting, what the, uh, uh, what we've learned, uh, learned while uh, developing this uh, template and what I would like to share with you right now. Um, first of all, um, I would like to mention that uh, in this example in, and in other, uh, any other uh, real world applications, usually we combine both um, dash HTML core and bootstrap component. You don't have to stick with only bootstrap or any other components. Combine them perfectly with one application, no problem at all. Uh, then um, um, take a look at the IDs uh, of the components. Each ID starts uh, with the name of the page. Uh, this is because the components uh, within the whole application should be unique. And to provide these um, uh, unique, uh, uh, to make them unique, 
uh, I recommend you always have a prefix uh, as a name of the page uh, at the beginning. The, the, that will make your life much easier. And then uh, we have additional classes, uh, uh, CSS classes defined uh, for the components with a um, property called class name. Uh, you can learn about these um, classes uh, in the documentation for Bootstrap framework, and they provide nice um, way to uh, manage spacing on the um, spacing between your components. Yeah, so they will not uh, stack on uh, each other on your page and look good. The next tip, uh, when I was demonstrating you um, this uh, page demo, uh, you saw this uh, loading, um, uh, loading uh, spinner. Uh, it was a little bit static in my uh, screenshots, but in real life, you will see that it's uh, run uh, spinner and it is enabled by the component called loading. Uh, it's very easy to use this component just grab all the components that you expect to be updated with some callback with a loading um, a component and it will run this spinner while callback is being processed. Uh, it's nice uh, feature to uh, provide some visual feedback uh, for your user while callback is still processing. And uh, a little bit uh, about the graphics uh, in uh, Plotly Dash. Mm, uh, first of all, I should um, uh, mention that uh, Plotly Dash uh, supports Plotly graphics. Uh, and um, there is nice feature uh, for the plot Plotly graphs that they have this so-called uh, mod bar at the top uh, right corner. Uh, it, uh, it is visible when you uh, hover over the uh, graph, but if you don't like this uh, uh, mod bar, you can easily disable it. Just um, uh, apply additional config to your graph um, component with display mod bar set to false, and you will not see this. Uh, this mod bar, even if you if you hold over the graphs, uh, that may uh, make uh, your uh, pages look a little bit nicer. The second example, the second example is uh, basically Iris uh, clustering application adopted from the uh, Dash Bootstrap components examples page. Again, a very simple application developed on top of uh, our uh, template, interactive works nice, um, useful tip from this example that actually you can reuse uh, the same function for different callbacks. Very interesting tip. And the last one example that I would like to share with you today, it's actually um, a portfolio optimization uh, accelerator. This is a real world uh, demo application that we develop within the team B um, for financial services. It's a, um, a stock market portfolio optimization tool. It's developed 100% uh, on top of our uh, project uh, template. You can, you can track the visual style um, that I've discussed previously and how this page uh, look like uh, as a real application. And um, uh, that's it uh, uh, for the main part of the uh, presentation. Let, let's check what we have, what, um, what answers do we have uh, um, on your questions. Um, I don't know, the first answer, 20%, extremely 6%. I'm sorry, uh, I will not switch uh, the screens, uh, but Plotly Dash, 19%, Rshine, 19%, Jupyter, 13%, Flask, interesting, 13%, and others, another 13%. So we have uh, two uh, leaders, apart from, I don't know, 
uh, which is plotly dash and r shiny. And it's uh, very reasonable, I, I believe, because uh, I think that both shiny and dash, they have pretty much the same uh, concepts behind, yeah. Uh, layout of the application built with RO Python with um, a callback function to enable uh, interactivity. Uh, and I guess that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those.